Uh, welcome back guys. In this episode, I'm going to talk about um, beliefs and mixed strategies, probably the most complicated or confused uh, topics in game theory. However, the basic idea is very simple and hopefully in this episode, I'll be able to uh, you know, uh, explain the basic idea as clearly as uh, possible. So here is uh, uh, what we mean by beliefs. So in, in, in a strategic environment, we do need to know uh, or we need to sort of incorporate the beliefs into the uh, process or into the analysis. But when we talk about beliefs, we're not talking about uh, beliefs about the world uh, of this uh, player. We mean uh, beliefs about his or her opponent's strategies. So to be specific, whenever you see or hear belief of a player, we actually mean his or her assessment about the strate strategies, strategies of uh, the other players uh, uh, in the game, all right? Um, so that's it. So uh, belief of a player is his or her assessment about the strategies of his or her opponent in this game. So let's sort of give a very simple example. Uh, the Prisoner's Dilemma game. I sort of briefly mentioned it, uh, but let me sort of also give you the story of the Prisoner's Dilemma. So there are two players, two sort of suspects, uh, player one, and player two. So these two players are put into separate uh, rooms and the police are basically interrogating them. And the evidences are not strong, so their confession is needed uh, uh, to be able to give them sort of a, a jail time uh, or sort of a, a sort of a strong punishment. Um, but, you know, uh, the confession is, is, is needed. Uh, the evidence is not enough. So there are therefore two actions for each player and these players need to choose their actions without knowing the other's uh, choice, all right? So they're interrogated at the same time, literally. So they can choose don't confess or confess. So the thing is, when player one and player two, they both confess, well, the police says uh, they're gonna give one year of jail time to both, all right? Well, uh, so because as I said, the evidence are not strong enough. However, if they both confess, well, then the police is going to give them 10 years of jail time, all right? Because it's, it's a serious crime, let's suppose. Well, the thing is, if one guy confesses, but the other guy does not, well, uh, the confessing guy is actually going to get benefit out of it. So he's going to go into no jail, all right? But his uh, opponent, the other guy, is going to go to jail for 15 years, all right? And sort of the symmetric, if the one guy doesn't confess, uh, but then the, 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 the second guy confesses, well, then this time, the, the guy who doesn't confess is going to get 15 years, uh, 15 years of jail time, and the confessing guy is basically going to get, uh, get rid of it. So confessing is actually a good thing, right? Uh, if you know that your opponent is not going to confess. Otherwise, confessing is a terrible, terrible thing if you both confess. Uh, so... These are the jail uh, uh, times, by the way, all right? So what about the utility, right? I mean, these are the uh, strategies, these are the outcomes, you know, 15 years jail, zero years in jail, 10 years in jail, etc. Well, what about the preferences? Obviously, nobody wants to spend too much time on jail. So let's suppose the utility function is the following. Uh, utility of years in jail is equal to, so utility of the outcome is equal to uh, uh, minus, um, oh, that should be 100 minus, right? Yeah, it is 100 minus, it's 100 minus uh, uh, number of years in jail times 10. Okay, I mean, uh, it's just, you know, one way of calculating, meaning, if you basically go to jail for no time, zero time, obviously that's the best scenario, right? Nobody wants to go to jail. And so your max utility will be 100. But the thing is, the more year in jail, uh, your, your utility will, will sort of uh, deduct it from 100. And so the more, like, like 10 year, for example, is like zero utility. Um, and then 15 years is like minus utility, right? So for example, U of zero years is equal to, as I said, 100 minus zero, so it's 100. U of, for example, 10 years is equal to 100 minus 
10 times 10, 100, so it's a zero. U of 15 years is equal to 100 minus 150, so it's minus 50. What else? U of 1 is equal to just 90. All right, so it's better than uh, definitely <clears throat> uh, uh, going to jail for 15 years or 10 years. So therefore, these are the outcomes, the payoffs. We always need to put the payoffs because uh, 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 this is what uh, the players do care about. So don't confess, confess, don't confess, confess. The game can be transformed, transformed into this one year, one year. By the way, for simplicity, I assume that the, 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 the utility functions or the pair of functions for these guys are exactly the same. So therefore, they're going to get 90-90 utility here. And then 15 to 0 is going to be like minus 50 to 100 utility. And then here it's going to be the opposite, right? The first guy is getting 100 and the second guy is getting like minus 50. is a horrible outcome. And then the 10-10 is basically going to give them 0-0 uh, zero, zero utility. Okay? Um, so, yeah, this is the strategic game. Well, the question is, when player 1 chooses his strategy, he doesn't know what his opponent is doing, but he's going to form a belief about his opponent, right? Um, so, if we ask the first player, what do you believe, what do you think, that your opponent is going to do well well there are a couple of answers he can say i believe uh, my opponent is my friend he will not confess at all so i'm sure that he's not going to confess or maybe he's going to say i know this guy he will certainly confess all right or he may the the answer would be i am not really sure i mean he may or may not confess so i think with some you know possibility he may actually confess all right, so the first two answers, like I am sure that my opponent is going to do this or that, these are sort of uh, very explicit. Uh, but the, the, the third answer is like, I'm not really sure. I mean, he may confess, uh, but I'm not sure with, uh, you know, uh, I'm not certain about it. So it's like, this is a very vague answer. And we do not want such vague answers because we want to be more concrete, more uh, uh, explicit, more formal uh, as we can. So for that reason, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that players can actually say, all right, um, I believe that my opponent, the second player, is going to play D, don't confess, with some probability P. And because there are two possible events, right, he will either don't confess or confess. There's no other third option. Um, Again, it's like if there is a third option, that would mean there would be a third strategy. All right, so be careful about it. Because there are only two strategies, that means you're going to either choose this outcome or that outcome. So player one can say, I'm going to, I believe that my opponent is going to play or don't confess with probability P. Therefore, he's going to confess with probability 1 minus P. All right, so we want our players to be uh, uh, very explicit. And the P, obviously, can be some number between 0 and 1, right? If P is 0, for example, that means he believes his opponent is going to confess for sure. If P is 1, that means he believes his opponent is not going to confess. If P is 1 half, that means he believes that his opponent is equally likely to confess or not confess, all right? But once again, we assume that each player can be very specific about his or her beliefs. There's no vagueness, all right? That's a strong assumption, obviously. In reality, people do not really hold so strong beliefs. I mean, so explicit beliefs. Uh, we are usually vague. But, I mean, this is, once again, just to uh, make a formal model. That's very important uh, assumption uh, to, 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 to form a, form a formal model and sort of formal analysis. All right, well, so obviously and symmetrically, player two can have or hold beliefs about player one. So he may assume or he may think or believe that his opponent is going to don't confess with Q probability and confess with one minus Q probability, right? So this P and one minus P and this Q and one minus Q, 
These are beliefs of player one and two. And later, in fact, we are going to interpret them as strategies. I mean, why don't we consider them as strategies? So my strategy, I'm sorry. So my strategy is basically uh, choosing to confess on, and don't confess uh, randomly, all right? Uh, maybe I don't want to be explicit, I, I'm sorry, uh, maybe I don't want to be predictable because predictability is sometimes uh, leads to a, a terrible, terrible outcomes. So sometimes I may want to be unpredictable. In that case, I may want to randomize. But once again, we don't want to be vague about randomization. And so therefore that means I'm going to randomize. I'm going to choose P uh, probability of playing don't confess and one minus P probability of confess. All right. So again, in reality, nobody is doing such a randomization. All right. I, I know. I mean, we know, obviously, but we may think of those beliefs as part of strategies. OK, so we call those strategies, therefore, mixed strategies. OK, uh, that's it. So mixed strategy is basically probability distribution over strategies. So remember here in this game, player one has two strategies. So his mixed strategy is a probability distribution over these two strategies, I mean D and C. So for any Q in between zero and one, uh, it gives me one mixed strategy. So one sort of nice thing, we basically enrich the set of strategies. Although players have two strategies, if we in, in, in sort of interpret those beliefs as strategy, right, Q can be anything. Q can be one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one eighth, etc. So there's like infinitely many possibilities. So the set of strategies are actually going to be like infinitely many, although there are in fact two strategies. So sometimes in order to distinguish these strategies CD versus the mixed strategies, we call C and D pure strategy and any other sort of belief, you know, PQ business as mixed strategy. All right. Um, so obviously every pure strategy uh, is a mixed strategy, right? Uh, for example, a pure strategy D is in fact a mixed strategy where Q is equal to one. A pure strategy C is again a mixed strategy where Q is equal to in fact zero. So one minus Q is equal to one. All right, so you got the idea. Every pure strategy is in fact a mixed strategy. So mixed strategy is just uh, another way of looking at beliefs and also another way of extending the set of strategies.